Hello there, my name is Athanasios Posantis, aka Noseman, and in this tutorial we are going to see how to create this using MoGraph, the Volnoi Fracture object, and make it totally procedural. Let's start from scratch and go to a new scene. In a new scene, let's go and create a default capsule primitive. And uh, let's go a bit closer so we can see what's going on. I'm going to turn on my display gross shading lines so I can see the topology of this particular object. And I'm going to go and select it and go to the attributes and bring these together and change a few of the parameters. In the object tab, I'm going to set my segments to 16. So we have more segments on the caps and uh, set the rotation segments to something like 32. And I think that's good enough for what I'm trying to do. Now I'm going to go to the MoGraph menu, or I can go over here, it doesn't really make a difference, and bring up a Voronoi Fracture object, not to be confused with a Fracture object without the Voronoi. In the Object Manager, I'm going to make the capsule a child of the Voronoi Fracture, and now we have a Fractured Capsule. The shape of the fractures is not satisfactory, so select the Voronoi Fracture object, go to the Sources tab in the Attributes Manager, select the point generation distribution, the default points, and just press delete or backspace to remove it. I want to create a radial configuration of fragments. And to do that, I'm going to create a default circle in my 3D viewport. And I can go and dolly out and move this, or I can use my shortcuts 3 to tumble, 2 to dolly in and out, and 1 to pan, so I can see the whole circle. Alternatively, I can press S on the keyboard to frame the selection. I can now use this circle by selecting the Voronoi Fracture object, going back to the sources, and dragging the circle in here to create radial fragments. Fantastic! And of course, if I select this circle and use my rotation tool to rotate it, I can rotate these fragments, which looks really, really nice. Now let's pull out a bit. As you remember from my original scene, and if you observe, the fragments inside are moving in a different direction. So the inside ones are moving in a clockwise direction, the outside ones in a counterclockwise direction. So let's go back to our scene and create the configuration necessary to do that. I'm going to make a copy of this circle by dragging and pressing Command or Control on the PC, and I'm going to make it smaller from the attributes. And as you can see, nothing changes because we need to go and add it to the sources. But again, nothing really changed. If I select this and rotate it, you will see they do rotate. Let's undo. But if you select the outer circle and rotate it, nothing is going to happen. The reason is very simple. You need to make sure the circle needs to be small enough to create fragments for the inner part. And the other one needs to be close enough so that the top and bottom are affected. Now we can go and add some keyframes to these circles to make them rotate in the appropriate direction. So let's select the outer circle, go to the coordinates tab, and at frame 0 I'm going to put 0 degrees, and at frame 90 I'm going to put 360 degrees and add a keyframe. And you will see that they're rotating clockwise. And let's select the other circle, set a keyframe at frame 0 and go to frame 30 and set this to minus 360 degrees and add a keyframe. Now we should have counter rotating circles. Fantastic! The reason we are not going to use this method is the following. As I'm scrubbing my animation, you will see that the colors are actually flickering. They're not stable. There you go. Look at that. You can see that the colors are not stable. And the reason for that is the following. If you go to the Voronoi Fracture object and go to the Transform tab, in the display, if you set it to Index, you will see that the indices are flipping around. So you can see this is 0 and 1 and 2. And if I move this, you will see that they become 1, 2 and 3. So they are 
flipping around and that won't allow us to have stable colors on each fragment. The solution to this is to use MoGraph. So let's go to the two circles. Let's go to the coordinates. I do not want them to have any animation. So press Command or Control Shift and click here to remove the keyframes. And at the same time, I'm going to go to the Voronoi Fracture, Transform tab, and remove the indices from the viewport. Instead of the circles directly, I'm actually going to use a matrix object. So let's go and create a matrix object. And we need to go to the Object tab and set it to Object Mode. But we can only use one object, so I need to find a way to consolidate these two circles into one object. And for that reason, I'm going to go to the Modeling Generators menu and bring up a Spline Mask. And if I set the Spline Mask to OR and make sure the axis is along the Z and drop the two circles as a child of the Spline Mask, then this Spline Mask represents both circles. So I can go to the matrix object, drag the spline mask in the object, and now we have matrices on these splines. Let's go for a second and turn off the Voronoi fracture and the capsule. And let's go to the matrix, and in the transform tab, let's turn on the indices. So if I press play, there is no animation going on, but the good thing about the matrix when using a spline as the object is that we can create procedural animation. The rate value allows you to move a matrix over the length of a spline per second. So if you put this at 100%, every second, and let's see the index zero is here. So at 30 frames, you will see that the index zero is back here. So it did 100% of the spline over one second. I do not want it that fast, so I'm going to set my rate to 30%. Fantastic. And I'm going to play the animation, and you can see how fast they are going. Now, we obviously see two things. One is a positive thing, that the indices are stable. You can see the numbers do not change. But the problem is that the circle inside is rotating in a different direction. But that's a very easy fix. If you select the inner circle and you go to the object in the attributes manager you can reverse the winding of that spline and now it goes the other way around which is fantastic so let's go and apply the matrix now to the Voronoi fracture source so turn it on go to the Voronoi fracture go to the sources let's delete these circles from here and instead of the circles we're going to grab the matrix and you will see now that we have this very beautiful fragmentation, but still they are flipping. Now the numbers you're seeing here are the indices of the matrix, not the indices of the Voronoi fracture. Because they're both MoGraph objects, they both have indices for each and every one of their components. So let's go to the matrix, transform, let's turn this off. Let's now select the Voronoi fracture and uh, let's go to the transform. And let's turn these on. Now if I scrub, you will see that we have the same problem just like before. We need to find a way to transfer the color to each and every one of these fragments so that it's always the same. In order to do that, we are not going to rely on the Voronoi Fractures Index. So let's turn this off. What we are going to do is transfer the indices of the matrix, which are stable, to something else. In this particular case, it's going to be the weights of each and every one of the clones. If you go to the matrix object, again the transform tab, and you set this to weight, you will see that the weights are all zero. And the more I increase this, they become yellow. Yellow is one, and red is zero. I want to be able to set the weight of each and every one of these matrices to be a unique number that's associated with the index. And the way to do that is to go to the MoGraph menu and use a step effector, which is by default set to scale. I'm gonna turn off the scale. I want it to affect the weight transform. So set this to 100%. I'm gonna turn this off so you can actually see that there is a gradation now. 
that goes from yellow all the way and becomes more and more red. Each and every one of the indices now is getting a number between 0 and 1, which is unique to each and every one of them. In order to transfer that value now to the fragment color, we select the Voronoi fracture, we create a plane effector, make sure that the position is off and the color mode is in fields, and in the fall off, we need to bring in those weights from the matrix. And the way this works in MoGraph is we have to select the matrix, drag it in the fall off window, and set this to a MoGraph object. Something that many users don't know is that if we drag a MoGraph object in the field list, the only parameter it brings in is the weights. So now, let's go and turn off this value. Let's go to the Voronoi Fracture Object, Object tab, and turn off the Colorize Fragments. And we need to do a couple of things. In the Plane Effector, which I can name Plane Color, I need to select the MoGraph object, the matrix in this case, I need to set the remapping to on and then go to the color remap and set it to something other than no remap, gradient in this case. So now we have a gradient from black to white, which as you can see is very stable. It sticks with the fragments because it takes its value from the weight, which in turn it takes it from the index. And because each index is unique, each weight is unique, therefore each color is unique. And we're going to use this gradient to colorize the fragments. Before we do that, let's go to the Voronoi Fracture object and create some distance between the fragments. We need to go to the Object tab and we need to go to the Offset Fragments and add a value. I'm going to set this to 5. It's a bit too big, so I can set it to 2. I think that is the best value. Now let's go and select the, the plane color. I'm going to bring it down here so it's closer to the Volnoy fracture. And I'm going to go to the fall off tab, select the matrix, make sure the color remap is selected and go to the load preset. And let's load a nice little rainbow. And you can see now that we have really nicely colored fragments. And uh, I can go and turn off all the things I do not want to see, the circles, the spline mask and just fold it and now I can go and press play and I have a really really nice animation and if I set this to 300 frames which is 10 seconds I may get a looping animation that works really nicely with that 30% rate. Now this completes the actual technique but there are a couple of more things we can do to make it look interesting. If we select the matrix object and go and change the start and end, we can actually change the shape by which the fragments appear. So if I press play now, you will see that we get this very interesting shape. So let's go and turn off the grow shading lines. Let's go and turn on our screen space ambient occlusion. And there you have it. We have a procedural fragmentation that makes up a really beautiful object. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something today. Thanks for watching.